What's going on ladies and gentlemen? I'm just about to attempt to review three films back to back. Um, I've never done that before. I've done two movies um, plenty of times, but this is my first time attempting three. I may give up after the second one depending on how I'm feeling. But I, I, as an impetus to carry on, I'm kind of you know going from worst to best a little bit. So I'm starting off with the worst. Uh, it's a 1983 teen slasher movie set in a sorority house. You're probably uh, familiar with this one. It's The House on Sorority Row from 1983. So having just graduated from college, a group of girls are preparing to leave their sorority house. They plan to play a prank on the sorority mother who they all hate. She's, she's very overbearing, she's protective of the house, she imposes very strict rules. And when the seemingly fairly innocent prank goes wrong, she ends up shot and killed. The group decide to try and cover up the murder as a party that they're having later cannot be cancelled. So they wait the body down and hide her in the unused swimming pool of the house. Later on at the party, members of the group and their friends begin falling victim to a series of violent murders. And they begin to wonder if there was more to their sorority mother than they may at first have seemed. Incidentally, I forgot to mention that the movie is directed by Mark Rosman. It doesn't star anyone of any particular note. So I've got to say, the basic setup for the movie kind of is cliched in a way, but not over cliched. You know, the, the kind of all the characters feel a little bit stock, you know, and it doesn't help that they're very poorly acted for the most part. The standard of acting in this film is pretty terrible. But then you've also got the kind of um, element of trying to cover up this prank gone wrong, which I kind of like. I think that from a story point of view, it's written fairly well. You know, the idea of kind of just they're going to deal with it after the party, you know. I, I quite like that idea. I feel like that's a, a reasonably good setup to the to the movie. Not the best setup to a slasher movie ever, but a decent one. Unfortunately, the problems pretty much start from there on out. To be honest, one of the biggest problems with this movie is that there just aren't any characters that you really want to get on the side of. I mean, the characters kind of range from, you know, kind of characters that you have no real opinion of to characters who you just really want to shake and say what are you doing you know and a couple of them are just outright bitches and this this is the problem is that that you know your kind of final girl character you know there's and i know that you're not really supposed to spend your time watching a horror movie questioning logic but you just i just ended up saying if just call the police what 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 is your problem you know and i mean that's just not the way to enjoy a horror movie so the fact that you know none of the characters make you want to get on the side of the victims just leaves you feeling a little bit kind of deflated i've got to say though the kills are pretty good that's one thing that i will give this movie they're fairly imaginative um fairly ingenuitive unfortunately they are hampered a little bit by the special effects being not the best you know they're passable they're they're pretty standard you know they're not particularly terrible but at no point do they look particularly convincing you know occasionally they'll have a moment where it's like yeah that's better but overall you know they're nothing to write home about whatsoever i'm not going to spoil the movie obviously but once it kind of reaches the climax of the story and you begin to get the full picture of what's going on it does have quite a cool idea at the core of it kind of you you get introduced to a character sort of early on and then he doesn't reappear till later on but he's kind of got a dual motivation for wanting to kind of cover things up but at the same time sort of do the right thing um really which is is a cool way to kind of bring the plot together the plot does come together in quite an interesting way ultimately as i say the problem with this movie definitely isn't really with the plot it's with the execution you know the acting's terrible um and it's just not sold right you know Th these characters don't make you care which is is, is the problem ultimately with a horror movie, a successful horror movie gets you some level of emotional involvement with the characters and kind of invests you in um, hoping that they are safe. You know, that's that's kind of the goal of um, a slasher movie of this uh, particular ilk. In The House on Sorority Row, that just doesn't happen. You know, you know, all the characters are either kind of meh or actually unlikable. And I don't think it's one of those cases where they were trying to make the 
characters unlikable so that you wanted them to be killed. I feel like this film's a little bit more naive than that. I don't think it falls into that trap that a lot of really shitty slasher movies do. I mean, aside from the problems that I sort of listed with the fact that it's not the best put together film from a kind of execution point of view, the movie isn't the hardest thing to watch. Ultimately, it comes out very balanced. I wasn't overly offended by it, but in terms of, you know, my, my tastes weren't <laughs> kind of insulted. I didn't feel like it had particularly insulted my intelligence. It wasn't overly dumbed down. It was just a case of a, a fairly good script being not executed properly, which is a shame but it happens from time to time. Overall, The House on Sorority Road definitely isn't the worst uh, of the slasher movies of the early 80s, but it's far from one of the best. You know, kind of the positive and negatives balance up pretty well. I'm gonna give it a five out of 10. With a little bit more spit and polish, I feel like this movie could have been pretty good. Although I don't think it was ever gonna reach the kind of pantheon of classics. I, I think that that would have involved a much better special effects job, uh, some rewrites of the script, and frankly, some better actresses. Thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen, my name's Luke Innes, I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you have why not consider subscribing, leave me a like and a comment, all of that's very cool, but if you want to be extra cool you'll go and check out my podcast, it's called Ironcast, it's linked in the description. Thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen.